getting ready for seven minute seed. I am so glad that you joined me today. We are talking about what we have been talking about in our root course for every age group called The New You. I am Pastor Kate from RootBible.com coming to you with 7 Minute Seed. But before we go there, have you checked out RootBible.com? The current course available to all ages is The Real You. It's all about identity and how our identity is now in Christ. And today we're even going to dive into covenant promises, which is what we dove into this last week and still tomorrow for family class with every age group. Remember, that's preschool, elementary, junior high, high school, and adults, so that we can be learning these things together in our home, rooting our lives in Christ together, strengthening, stretching, sharpening one another, and actually be the body of Christ starting in our homes. How cool is that? Now today, <laughs> I feel like every time I push play, I'm drinking something that makes um, my throat gargle <laughs> today in Sevia. Hmm, what fun. But if you haven't checked out The Real You on RootBible.com, it is free. So guys, why wouldn't you have your kids jump in, give it a try. You jump in, give it a try. These are free classes to help people grow their roots in who they really are in Christ so that not just we can grow them, we can live it out. We have a series called the Reboot Series and we take uh, families live, anyone who wants to do it actually, one hour a day for 21 week days and we grow their roots and then their branch and then we show how the Holy Spirit now displays the fruit. So that's super fun. Not at all what I was going to talk about. So again, I'm Pastor Kate, and we're going to put seven minutes on the clock because we're going to talk about New Covenant. How do we make that real in our home? Maybe some of you don't know what it is. So here we go. Seven minutes on the clock. Let's go. All right. A New Covenant. We know that the Old Testament was based on Old Covenant. What? Why was it an Old Covenant? It was an Old Covenant because there was a continual need for sacrifice to be right with God. So what was that continual sacrifice? It was the sacrifice of blood of lambs and goats. So that sacrifice would be brought to the priests into the temple once a year for the people uh, to be acceptable, for God's people to be acceptable for his sight. We could go into that. I won't. There is another class for that. Hey, I didn't mention, I'm in my seven minutes. It's not fair. We have a free class on what really happened from the cross to the throne coming up next week. You don't want to miss that. It's an hour a day for four days. Do you really want to know what Easter is about? You might want to jump in that class. And then we have one coming up on how to read God's word, understand it, and actually apply it. A lot of people will get saved and can be overwhelmed by the size of the Bible that they don't know where to start. This class is phenomenal. So, okay, that was a freebie within the seven minutes. Okay, so what is covenant? Um, old covenant versus new covenant. New covenant. Now we enter the new covenant. How did we come to the new covenant? That means we had to have a final sacrifice that wasn't um, an actual goat and wasn't an actual lamb. It was the lamb of God, which was Christ Jesus. He came to fulfill the covenant. That means he honored every part of it without a sacrifice until he was the sacrifice. Beginning a covenant between Jesus and God. Not between God and man, between Jesus and God began the covenant. And then when we believe in Christ Jesus, guess who else that covenant is with? Those who believe in Christ Jesus, which is why we must root our lives in Christ Jesus, because it's Jesus who has the covenant with the Father. And that's also why no matter what we do, that does not determine the covenant. The covenant is made with Christ, with his Father, through his blood, in the heavenlies, Every little G God, every spiritual principality recognizes that that covenant was made. And when we agree to make Jesus the Lord of our life, we believe and confess, we take covenant with Christ who has, Christ, who has covenant with God. And now in Christ Jesus, we've been made the righteousness of God, which means we are right with God in who? Christ Jesus by ourselves, on our own account, by what we can do, by what we can accomplish. No. Now, what does this mean? What's, you know, a simple definition we went over with the kids of, and high schoolers for that matter, and adults, because we just taught the adult class. A simple definition, I'm sorry if you hear my papers going back and forth here. They are out of order. Ah! 
Okay, a covenant, a promise that cannot be broken, where they both agree to share all their strengths, weaknesses, riches, and debts, 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 okay? So, to agree to help each other no matter what. What I have is yours, what you have is mine. Now, the closest thing Americans know when I'm explaining this uh, with our children at home is a marriage, okay? I don't do things outside of talking with my husband, and my kids know that. And they understand that that's because the Bible calls it a mystery that we became one. Well, when we believe in Christ Jesus, we become one with Christ. And therefore, that same covenant that Christ made with God is made with us. What does that mean? We gladly lay down our life to consult him in everything we do. The old nature that was in covenant with this world is gone. In fact, unless they brought goat's blood in in the old covenant or the, the spotless lamb, unless they brought that in every year, then they were in covenant with the world, not under the protection of God. They weren't in covenant with God. But now we have a covenant of the final covenant of Christ's blood that went in once and for all. And we are one in Christ. That means what we have is his and his is ours. Now, the minute we say yes to Christ, guess what? All of that is ours. But now when addressing our children in our home and raising our home and addressing our spouses, we now are not our own. That means decisions we make on our education, on our future, on how we'll treat our spouse, on how we'll treat our children, on how our, we'll treat our siblings. Guess what? That's not up to uh, us. You see, we can surrender and should and are mandated to lay our flesh on the altar and die completely that who may live? That Christ may live. See, the reason we get baptized is we lose our own life. Goodbye. Hello, new life. Right? The seal of the Holy Spirit comes in. He's called a seal because he's sealing that covenant. He's that covenant promise seal going, this is real. And I'm here to help walk out while you're still in this world that's under the dominion of darkness, to walk out that covenant promise while you're here. Pulling those promises that have been put in you, that faith that's been put in you, I'll help bring it out. That's me, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to walk you into all knowledge and wisdom and revelation of this covenant promise in Christ. I'm going to reveal who the Father is through you. What? That's amazing. But now in addressing our children at home, how do we do that? Hey, how you're treating your sibling is, is that out of your covenant with uh, the father through Christ? Or is that like outside? You know, there's never a day I wake up and I decide I'm not in covenant with my husband. Now, I realize we live in a world that has made that mean nothing, but it still means something to me. A covenant means something. A covenant meant something in the Old Testament, meant something in the New Testament, and it obviously still means something to God. So those society changes, our understanding of the importance of what God places importance on does not have to. So when talking about covenant with our kids, you know, when Christ gave us all things, was that so we could continue living life like the rest of the world? Was that so we could continue to have our own opinions or feelings towards someone that aren't his? Is that so that we could plan our future apart from him? Is that so we could plan our future and expect him to bless it? Is it so that we could live our life separate and then beg for him to follow along? Those are hard questions that the Lord demonstrates in his word is not his plan. Because he's come to fill us with his light and his life. And our job is not to cover it up, but rather let it out for all to see. To take that seed of the word and protect it and cultivate it and let it grow deep roots in he who we have a covenant with. Because apart from that covenant is death. How cool is that? I didn't even get to scratch the surface. Our seven minutes is up. You're going to have to join me in the next one. But I'm going to pray for you, and then I will see you on the other side. Thank you, Father, for those ears that are tuned to hear your words through me. Thank you for this seed. I ask that you protect it, Father, that they would learn how to cherish the, your word and allow it to take root, that it wouldn't be dug up or stolen away, that they would have patience in it rooting itself and taking seed. 
I thank you, Lord, that they not only have enough for themselves, but enough to give away at this moment, at this very time, to their families, to their spouses, to their neighborhoods. I thank you that this message goes in clear and nothing stands in its way. And Holy Spirit, you make it real in their homes every single day. In Jesus' name, thank you. I pray a blessing over you and your household until we meet again. I look forward to it for the next 7-Minute Seed. Bye-bye.